A hill full of monasteries and pagodas, a royal palace. Where are we? We are in Mandalay. After 11 hours over the Irrawaddy River, just, we arrived yesterday night to Mandalay and we are now visiting its royal palace. We are on top of its tower where you have a pretty good hill, uh, view of the hill that we are going to visit afterwards and the complex of the royal palace itself. After a lovely boat trip over the Irrawaddy River from Bagan, we arrived to our next destination, Mandalay. We decided not to bring along to Myanmar our Bromptoms as we thought it was too complicated to transport them with all the small planes we needed to take within the country. But we for sure rented some bikes. And here we are, starting bike exploring the city to give you a feeling of what this city has to offer and show you the city from a different perspective. Mandalay is Myanmar's second largest city and home to half of the country's monks. Most people would be surprised to know that the city isn't ancient at all. In fact, technically Las Vegas is older. It was created by King Mindon Min of Burma in 1857 as the new capital of the Kingdom of Ava. Look, we can go there up into the tower. A very good view of the complex of the Royal Palace and it's, it's just a replica, it was rebuilt in 1995 uh, but it's still nice to, uh, to see and the view over the tower is pretty good. Mandala is the cultural capital of Myanmar and home of its last king. Because of its position on the Irrawaddy River near their geographic center of Myanmar and not far from China, it gives it a pivotal position in terms of commerce and administration. We are entering now the central palace. The Royal Palace in Mandalay is a very important building. A lot of it was burned down during World War II. The Royal Mint and Watchtower did not burn down, but the rest of the buildings were totally rebuilt. Today, the palace is an important symbol of Mandalay. It is considered a spiritual center of Myanmar and has so many religious shrines it has been described as a forest of temples. Only Bagan has more. It has many beautiful spots and stunning religious architecture, even though it was ravaged by fires in 1945, 1981 and 1984, when many of its beautiful wooden buildings were destroyed. We are now at Sandamuni Pagoda, which is a Buddhist stupa located southwest of Mandalay Hill. It was commissioned by King Mindon Min in 1874 as a memorial to Mindon Min's young, younger brother, Kanauna Minta, who was assassinated along with three princes, Malun, Saku and Meng Yin, during the 1866 Mingun Prince Rebellion. This pagoda contains their graves.
We are now in Cutado Pagoda, which is next to the Royal Palace and down from the Mandalay Hill. What is relevant from this site is that it contains the biggest book in the world. And this book, it's made out of 729 marble slabs, which each tells the story, has inscriptions that tell the story of the Buddhist teaching. Each of the slabs is housed, as you can see, in a little shrine. And it was the last king of Burma which instructed to build this site in order to preserve the teaching of Buddhism for the future generations. Initially, each line of writing had been filled with golden ink and the stones were decorated with precious stones including rubies and diamonds. Unfortunately, after the British invaded, they striped the slabs of their gold ink and gems. So after 45 minutes walking stairs, we are on top of Mandalay Hill and the best timing to come here is before sunset to see an amazing sunset, so that's what we are hoping for. You could also, instead of walking the stairs, take a scooter up to the top or take just a lift up. However, I recommend you to walk it, even if it's a little bit of effort, because in every step to get here, you have markets, you find other temples, a lot of Buddha statues, so I think it's worth it. Mandalay Hill is a 230 meters high hill in Mandalay. It's a holy hill and there is a legend about this hill. The Buddha visited the hill and made a prophecy. He said that someday a great city will be built at the bottom of the hill. There are many temples, monasteries and pagodas built on the hill. <laughs> Something very original in Mandalay is its Mandalay Pui. 
It's a variety show of singing, dancing and comedy skits which can last all night. From my hotel in Mandalay I could hear the cacophony of no less than three of these shows through the world. At first I found the amplified strains and alien tongues pleasing to my sense of the exotic, but after two nights of fitful sleep I began to get a bit pissed off. Actually, a third category of noise can be added to the list. It is a noise associated with religion. Steepless and minarets compete with stupas for the skyline of Mandalay, and from these houses of worship pour the noises of faith, gongs, hymns, bells, and the call of the Muswin. Well, you can imagine what a fun we had in the night. Basically, the city transforms itself in a disco of religious sounds and music. I had never experienced something like this before. I was so irritated that I was about to go down to unplug the huge speakers, but luckily I finally was too excited to have the power to do so, and thanks God, because after we saw in the news that the Dutch did exactly that a few days before and got arrested and was sentenced to prison for months. Here's when you realize that you are in a totally different world in this country and that even if for us Europeans this is unthinkable, you need to be very careful and always respect the religion and traditions and adapt in another country. As you can observe, something spectacular in Mandalay is it artisanal craft. They have such an incredible variety of impressive wooden and stone sculptures, paintings and broderies that I would really advise you to spend some hours admiring how those artists work. If you enjoyed my video, it would be great if you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell, so anytime I upload any new video, you will get notified. Thank you very much for watching, and until very soon.